Hello everyone, I welcome you to another episode on the inspiration of the Quran. Uh, I will continue with the study to look at the nature of the revelation. Remember in our previous video, we saw that the way Muhammad received the revelation of the Quran shows it could not be from God. It, it, it was strange. God never spoke to any of his prophets in that way by trying to kill them. You know, the angel was, the alleged being was squeezing Muhammad by the neck, trying to kill Muhammad. And Muhammad was scared, almost, was, was almost killed. So he just had to follow the being. We, we never saw such in the, in the scriptures, in the Bible, which um, was before the Quran. And today I want us to go a bit further. If you've not watched the previous video, I'll pray with you to go watch the previous video so that you get a better understanding on this very subject. Firstly, Muhammad did not know who was talking to him. Why is this crucial? Why is it important for Muhammad to know who was talking to him? If you look at the Bible, all the prophets, when God spoke to them, they knew, oh, this, this is God talking to me. This is God speaking to me and sending me on an errand or telling me to go do something or telling me a message that I'm going to send to his people. But in the case of Muhammad, he never knew who was talking to him, who was speaking to him, if it was God, if it was Satan, if it was an angel, or if it was a demon, he never knew. So how, how, since he doesn't know who was speaking to him, how are we to know who was speaking to him? In when Muhammad got his revelation in, um, while he was meditating in the cave of Ira, it is recorded in Adit al-Bukhari 9111 that he ran away and went to meet his wife, his old wife, Khadija. Khadija um, was the first wife of Muhammad. She was 15 years older than Muhammad. Muhammad married Khadija when he was 25 and Khadija 40 years old. Khadija was the master, the, the, the boss lady, let me use it that, let me use that word, of Muhammad. Muhammad was a servant or a slave to Khadija before Khadija proposed marriage to Muhammad. So he ran to meet Muhammad and said, cover me, cover me, I'm scared something might happen to me. I'm scared, I don't know what's wrong with me. The Behind did not say, I am an angel. The Behind did not say, I am Allah. The Behind did not say, I am this, I am that. The Behind just left Muhammad to guess who he was by himself. This is strange, since we cannot find that in all of the examples of God speaking to the prophet. So we can't just say, oh, we can't conclude that it was the supreme being talking to Muhammad. It could have been one of the demons talking to Muhammad. Don't forget that um, the devil can transform himself into an angel of light in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 the bible says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light so if satan could be transformed into an angel of light it is possible that satan could have transformed himself into an angel of light just to lie to muhammad and muhammad Mara fell oh it was a lot talking to me but it was satan in reality so since the being was not able to tell himself to say, oh, I'm God, then we are left in doubt of who was speaking to Muhammad. Secondly, Muhammad himself did not claim initially that it was Allah talking to him. Muhammad never made such claim. When Muhammad ran to his wife, Khadija, all these are recorded in Al-Bukhari, in the Hadith, Al-Bukhari, 9111. When Muhammad ran to his wife Khadija to tell her of what has happened of what happened to him, the experience he had in the cave, his wife said, Nothing will happen to you, for you've been a good man. Allah will always be there to protect you. So Muhammad himself was not the one that said, Oh, Allah is the one talking to me. But it was well, Allah was the one talking to me. But it was his wife Khadija that said, it must have that, that I was hinting it that it must have been Allah talking to you. Now we have a problem here. Dijo was not a prophetess. How did she know that it was Allah, a supreme being, that was talking to Muhammad? If she was a prophetess, we might say, okay, maybe it was revealed to her that Allah was talking to um, um, Muhammad, but she was not a prophetess. Then how did she know? So perhaps she was referring to one. Of the pagan deities of that time she was referring to one of the pagan deities in mecca at that time and not to the supreme being 
that created, who created the old universe and everything therein. People, some Muslims may want to say, oh, Khadija was not a Muslim. Um, she, was, she was not an idolater. Ah, okay. That will be a discussion for another day. But one thing is certain that she was not a Muslim before Muhammad, according to Surah chapter 2, verse 14. Muhammad is said to be the first Muslim among his people. So if Khadija was not a Muslim before Muhammad, it shows that her idea of God and everything she would know of God would be based on her idea of idolatry. So she was referring to one of the idol deities. So Allah in the Quran would be said to be one of the deities of the Arab nations. Also, Muhammad never wanted to accept that it was Allah that was talking to him. He took Khadija, his wife, and Baraka bin Nafal, his uncle, to persuade him to accept that it was Allah. When he had the revelation and ran to his wife, he had the revelation, the, the, the wife took him to his uncle. This is recorded in Sa'id, al in the Adit al Bukhari, volume 4, book 55, in number 605. So they took him to his uncle, Baraka bin Nafal. Baraka bin Nafal was a Christian was a Christian who was prominent among his people, so took him to Waraka bin Nafal and said, listen to your nephew, think he has something to tell you. So Waraka bin Nafal asked Muhammad what had happened to him, and Muhammad narrated all of the experiences he had in the cave to Waraka bin Nafal, and Waraka bin Nafal said, oh, the same angel that appeared to Moses has appeared to you. So Waraka bin Nafal was the one who injected the idea of Angel Gabriel, the name of Angel Gabriel, into the brain of Muhammad. While um, Khadija was the one who injected the deity Allah into the brain of Muhammad. So, Barak ibn Nafal said, The same angel that appeared to Moses and the rest of the prophets in the Bible has appeared to you also. You are a chosen one. The things happening to you have been recorded in the scriptures. If I be alive up till the time that you begin to receive your revelation, I'll support you strongly. Fortunately, unfortunately for him, he died before Muhammad said, he died before Islam started I'm having prominence. Each year now, what standard did Baraka bin Nafal use to establish that it was the same angel that spoke to Moses and the rest of the prophets in the Bible that was speaking to Muhammad? Because if we should put the, the, the nature, the angel spoke to Muhammad and the rest of them, um, the prophets in the scriptures will see that they are different. And in the Quran, they try to say that the angel is also called the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is different from the angel Gabriel. So we see that they are completely different. We, we do not know how Baraka bin Nafal came to that conclusion. But whatever way he used to come to the conclusion, one thing is certain, he was very wrong. He came to a very wrong conclusion. The conclusion he came to was just too wrong. And he made the man, Muhammad, to begin to propagate some things that, so many things that are wrong because the man, Muhammad, felt, okay, this may be true that I, that has been recorded in the scriptures that I will come. So he started bringing out this false thing. So we can say that the religion of Islam, the Allah in Islam, and the angel Gabriel in Islam was, um, were, were all forged by Muhammad, Khadija, his wife, and Baraka bin Nafal, his uncle. So the nature of the revelation shows purely that it cannot be from God. Thank you. Remember to subscribe to the channel, to like, and to share this video to those who want me to benefit. For so many Muslims out there, and so many people do not really know this truth. So this is an high opener to tell them, see, you need to go back to look at the nature, the way God revealed himself to the prophets in the Bible, opposed to the way God received, revealed himself, uh, opposed to the way Allah revealed himself to Muhammad. And these will help so many of them to come into the truth.